Hey there people, welcome to this little video that I've put together. My regular viewers, and I use that word sparingly regular, of my channel will know this is not normally the type of content I post, but it's something that I think I should get out there because I've been through what you who've probably clicked on this video because you're going to British Army training at Purbright is about to go through. And so this video is basically about the bits of kit that I took and the items and products that I would specifically recommend that you take to your British Army basic training, which will make your life easier. And all the items I'm going to be recommending to you today, uh, you can find the exact items that I took in the list down below in the description. So the reason it's going to make your life easier is because it's better to be overprepared, but this is not overpreparing than underprepared. And the items I chose and took were of a high quality, and they also proved very reliable during my time at ATC Purbright. I'm not recommending that you go out and spend an absolute fortune, but these just are the bits and bobs that I found quite useful and that helped me during my time there. If you're about to start your training at Winchester or Harrogate, I cannot speak for what to take, but you know, you can use this as a sort of a, a guide if you wish. So the way I'm gonna break this video down is I'm gonna break it down into two different sections. The first section is going to be block living, block jobs, and just general admin, which you'll spend a lot of your time doing. And the second section I'm going to break down into field use and exercise. Just bits and bobs that will help you during your lessons whilst you're out in the field and when you go and do your, I believe it's five exercises over the course of 14 weeks. There's only one thing I ask of you here, and it's to not take this list as gospel. Please do take the rest of the relevant stuff on the advice kit list issued by your AFCO. I should also disclose that the AFCOs and the MOD did not help me with this list. This is just my personal recommendations. But enough wasting your time. Let's go ahead and get into it. So for starters, uh, when you get there, you're going to be spending an absolute lot of time working on your uniform. The first week is going to be general admin and getting your kit issued and everything. Uh, you'll go through many, many inspections whilst you're there. So you're going to want a very decent iron in order to get the right creases and to make sure your uniform is absolutely immaculate and perfect. My dad said to me that his uniform in training was always perfect and so they basically left him alone. So I adopted the same mindset and my uniform was always spotless and I never got bothered by the staff. So if you want to stay off the radar and be the grey man, uh, I definitely advise buying this iron that I'm going to recommend you here. Following up the iron, you're going to want a decent ironing board. Any ironing board will do, but you'd be surprised at the amount of people who rock up with shit irons and ironing boards. So you're definitely going to want to invest in a decent one. I've been using this iron board for now two years and it's just absolutely fantastic it hasn't broken once really good quality and my kit is just always up to standard on the topic of uniforms you're going to definitely want to go and buy this two pack of brushes but buy two of them so you have four brushes you want two for inside the block and you want two for outside when you want x and a one as a reserve because you know you can never have enough brushes adding on to that you're going to want to take some kiwi polished dark maroon or dark tan non-parade gloss you're going to want to take two tins of those because the amount of polish you'll be putting on your boots, you're going to be going through a lot of polish. And the same goes for Kiwi Polish Black Shoe. So shoe black, non-parade gloss. Non-parade gloss, funny enough, produces a better shine when you put it on properly and then you buff it off than if you were to be using parade gloss. Weird, I know, but trust me, these two polishes are the absolute best you can get kiwi has always been my brand and i've been using kiwi for a number of years now even when i was back to a cadet and during my time in the army i'm still using kiwi today so just kiwi dark tan kiwi shoe black that is the one you'll be wanting to be using you'll also want to pick up some antibacterial and baby wipes so i definitely recommend the antibacterial wipes detol 70 pack buy two of those and you can buy baby wipes of any pack for whatever the hell you want but i'll explain the use in a second so with antibacterial wipes, you're going to want to be able to disinfect your surface, you know, wherever you are, disinfect your bed space, disinfect your hands, especially when you're in the field because they're getting very dirty and muddy and you don't want to be putting all that crap into your system. So not only that, but during your time at your basic training, you are going to be doing something called block jobs. Every single morning, you're going to wake up around half five, six o'clock in the morning. You will clean the block top to bottom and then you will go to breakfast. And then after breakfast, your first timing will typically be around eight o'clock in the morning, it's nine o'clock in the morning, but you're gonna spend a significant amount of your time cleaning. And especially on inspection days, if your block jobs are not up to standard, you will get fucked and you're most likely to get an agai or a reshow and you don't want your instructors screaming in your face. So antibacterial wipes are not only a good way to keep your living area clean, but also because they are damp cloths, they help pick up dust better than just dry cloths. And if you have antibacterial wipes, 
and baby wipes, or if you wet the duster cloth I'll mention later, it picks up dust like there's no tomorrow, and dusting is the best block job. It's much better than doing the toilets, trust me. So go for dusting, especially if you're tall like me. I'm six foot three, so go for dusting, trust me. Antibacterial wipes also have their uses in the field because you're going to be getting your hands fucking dirty, and you don't want to be putting all of that dirt and shit onto your face, into your mouth, and when you eat and everything. Not only that, but in the MOD 24-hour ration packs or the 12-hour packs, you normally get issued a little spoon that you're gonna to wanna to keep clean for your morning admin inspections during your exercises. And if you want to be not eating the same shit off that spoon, I definitely recommend you use those antibacterial wipes to clean the spoon and make it nice and hygienic for yourself. Because when you come back from exercise or during X, everybody will get sick. It happens every time, people get sick. It's like the bloody university flu, isn't it? And baby wipes, when you're putting cam cream on, your hands, your face, your neck, your sniper's triangle, which is behind your ear, uh, baby wipes help just lick that stuff straight off and it's better than scrubbing for fuck knows how long. So baby wipes in the field, use them to take them off when you're in your DOS bag or sleeping bag as you guys know it, um, at night time. So that it helps, so that makes your morning admin routine a lot easier. But of course, don't substitute it for having an actual wash. Don't be a fucking grot bag, as they say. Wash your face properly, but just use it to get the cream off, yeah? These next items you've probably heard of uh, from people who are either current forces or whatever. They're called twisties. Now, basically, twisties just help to keep your trouser legs, you know, firmly strapped to your leg, firmly strapped to your boot, and it helps insects uh, not crawl up your leg during exercise as well. So, twisties, I've linked some down below in the description. You're going to want to buy a literal shit ton of twisties because they will go missing. People will not have them. People who don't know about them. And you're going to be going through an absolute load of those. I still find them everywhere in my kit today. You're going to want to buy a double-sided clothes brush. So when you're doing your number twos or your uniform, you can just get the brush. While, you know, just scrape all the crap off your uniform. Make yourself look spick and span. The same goes for a lint roller. Also use lint roller refills. And as I mentioned earlier, dusting cloths. And talking of dust cloths that I mentioned earlier, you're gonna to wanna to take uh, one pack or two packs. I had one pack of 10. And because my job was dusting, it just made everything so much easier. Um, and yeah, the morning routine for me was just great. Cause I was like, yep, dust cloth. Oh, I've dusted, sorted. Didn't get picked up once for inspection. On the topic of polish, you're gonna to wanna to pick up this Silvette. My dad's been using this in his time in the forces for the past 25 years. And my brother uses it and I use it. And trust me, when you go bulling your shoes, bulling your boots, these silvettes will produce an absolutely fantastic shine, which will help keep the staff off your back and also help impress them. On the topic of polishing as well, you're gonna to wanna to take some cotton wool balls. I took a bag of 100 because when you're using them to bull your number two shoes, especially towards your time leaving Purbright after your 14 weeks has ended or however long they may have extended or shortened it by, uh, cotton wool balls are an absolute essential. One of the most important bits of kit you will ever take is a padlock. Insecure kit, they call it insecure kit if your locker is not locked and i have seen it done a thousand times people will people will go in your lockers you know because there are some thieving bastards there but people will go in your lockers and they will take stuff or if they're directing your staff your corporals your sergeant walk in your room and your lockers open and the you know you're not there they're going to rip your locker out mate and if you've just spent the entire weekend ironing everything they're going to fucking throw it i've seen lockers get out the window and there's something called the clothes monster as well and it's where they put all of your clothes into a pair of trousers and a shirt and they hang it outside the window by its neck. Yeah, so the clothing monster isn't something you want to have. So secure kit, please. Eight, eight times padlocks. Just trust me, you're going to need it. Coat hangers, you're going to need coat hangers for your civilian. In your military locker, you should get 10 automatically installed military coat hangers, which you can hang your kit on. But you can also take 10 to hang in your civilian locker as well, just to keep all your stuff nice and organized. Brasso is a product that you're going to be using for polishing metal such as your cap badges, your uh, buttons on your number two shirt and other various metal things, whatever the hell they want polished. And to remove the Brasso wadding, make sure it's the wadding and not the liquid form, the wadding, you can use this little silver polished cloth to wipe it off and give it a nice shiny finish. This next item is something that I still wear every single day and my father had it during his time in the military and it's a simple waterproof sports watch. My dad's version lasted, what, three or four wars from 1990 to 2010, and he still has this watch today. I use this watch every day, and I've had it throughout my phase one and throughout my phase two, and I'm going to wear it every single day throughout my time in the military. Bring a sports watch. Waterproof, doesn't have to be fancy. Don't bring Apple watches, because that's fucking stupid. Cheap sports watches to tell the time. 
you don't need nothing fancy, this watch will serve the purpose, I promise you. You'll want to bring a personal med kit in order to look after yourself, and you're also going to want to bring a uh, camouflage med kit as well, which you can take out on the exercise area because it's camouflaged, they'll let you do it. Put in there plasters, blister plasters, for fuck's sakes, blister plasters. Blister plasters are amazing. If you have a blister, there's nothing worse than when you're doing your fuck knows how many mile tabs with 40, 50 kg on your back, or if your burgers stack like crap, it's going to be painful for you. Trust me, blister plasters, you're going to learn fast, will be your best friend. You can take a civilian issue sewing kit just for any sort of repairs whilst you're in the block and the army will also issue you a basic camouflage sewing kit for field repairs. I remember when I was on my exercise final fling, the very final exercise, my body armor wouldn't sew up because the buttons and the, the strapping was fucked. And so I spent God knows how long during whatever little downtime we had and I sewed up my body armor back together and it worked rather well from then. It was, it was surprisingly comfortable. On top of the regular notepads, pens, pencils, make sure they're black pens. You're going to want to get some permanent markers because every single bit of your kit will have your name in it. You will spend ages writing your name into every bit of kit. And if it's not written into your name, there's a phrase what they used to say, I can't remember what it was. The kit's just gone for a walk or something or there's no kit. Oh, do you want this? Yeah, I'll have it. Thank you. People just whatever. Just name every bit of your kit, please. One unorthodox bit of kit that I took was an A4 acrylic sheet. And when my brother finished his basic training in the Air Force, he said, hey, take this A4 acrylic sheet because you're going to be doing something called A4 folding. And that will become quite clear during inspections. And trust me, when you come to have your inspections, you'll be glad to have this A4 sheet, I promise you. And one of the snazziest bits of kits that I never had was a multi-tier locker organizer. In your civilian locker, oh, mate, oh, <laughs> trust me, having one of those, you were the dog's bollocks. Get that locker organizer and shaft it in your locker, mate. Trust me, that is invaluable bit of kit. And you can take it to phase two as well, which is excellent. Now onto field use and exercise kit. When you're there and you're doing your field craft and exercise and your skill at arms, um, especially when you go onto exercise, they will want every single bit of your kit waterproofed. I'm talking individually wrapped, waterproofed items. So you're taking five pairs of socks, that's five waterproof bags. Five sets of underwear, that's five waterproof bags. Spare set of clothes, that's two more waterproof bags. These waterproofing canoe bags are a bit on the costly side, but I absolutely promise you, I have these and I still use these every time I go on X and they are just fantastic. Stock up on a literal shit ton of these and try not to hand them out because people will rob them and people who aren't prepared and haven't watched this video won't know about that before they go to basic. So waterproof canoe bags, I promise you. Another unorthodox bit of kit is something called Scotch Bright. Now, I never knew this was an item, or I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it was called, but Scotch Bright. This is the best weapon cleaner and messing cleaner you will ever have in your whole life. Carbon on your weapon. Scotch Bright fucking annihilates it. Mess tins every morning when you're doing your morning admin inspection in the field. Because you're using dragon fuel, you're going to have that dark crap on the bottom. People will be scrubbing it off. Iron wool or Scotch Bright will make short work and your mess tins will be fucking gleaming. If you make your kit gleaming and you want to be left alone, I I beg you and I implore you, please purchase Scotch Bright. Take that with you. Next on, a compass, a silver military compass. During your navigation and field craft, the army will most likely issue you a compass as they did with us, but I had my own because I came prepared like you're supposed to. So buying the silver military compass with the little grid lines on it i'll point those out shortly the grid lines uh will help you to locate uh during specific grid bearings you know six grid bearings eight figure grid bearings and so on you'll learn about that later, later but just a silver silver military compass that's what i'm saying lighters you can buy this pack it's a one pack of five windproof jet lighters they're good for smoking if you smoke i did they're good for lighting dragon fuel, which you're going to use to cook your shit in your mess tins. And they're good for getting rid of pesky clothing fibers and loose strands of fiber on your uniform. Lighters are your best friend. Always carry a lighter with you, regardless of where you are. A head torch with red light filter. The army recommend this, the army issues you one, but it's always better to have your own as a reserve. Regrettably, I lost this version. I think I was in my, my oh, it's not a foxhole, what's it called? I was in my shell scrape one night and I was trying to find my head torch and I, I flicked it off my head and my helmet uh, and it went bye byes. Yeah, so always have a spare. This next item is called sniper tape. It's also known as CBR and tape. You 
if you're here, still watching this video, these are fat rolls of sniper tape, and they cost a bloody fortune in the shop on, on base. So please buy two of these thick rolls because you will be using this to secure your straps on your webbing, your straps on your bergen, your straps on your day sack, labeling your kit, labeling your waterproof bags, the canoe bags that I mentioned earlier, so you can find what it is you're looking for when you're in the field in low light situations. Trust me, sniper tape and CBR and tape, it's, the, it's quintessential, I promise you, quintessential bit of kit. Everyone scrounged me for this and it did my nutting because no other fool came prepared. Frustrating stuff. On the topic of fieldcraft, combat gloves. Get yourself, you can buy a better set if you want, but I bought these combat gloves with these hardened, it's like Kevlar or carbon fiber knuckles. And when you're doing methods of movement around week six, seven, I think, I can't remember, you, your knuckles will be in pain from the crappy little gloves they give you. So I, I implore you, combat gloves with hardened knuckles. These sets are fantastic, I, I promise you. And finally, bungee cords. The army will most likely issue you two times bungee cords uh, as part of your generic issue kit, but it's always good to have your own because there are people who won't use them or whatever else ridiculous shit reason they come up with. But this pack of 10 times bungee cords, you can never have enough of those. Putting up your basher, securing kit down, whatever you need to use it for, just buy your own bungee cords. I know I've waffled on a little bit, but I'm just trying to jog my memory and think back to what I was doing. But literally, every single item I've shown you on this video, I promise you, take this whole fucking list to your basic training. All of it is in the document below and in the links below. Trust me, go get it, go buy it. And your time at Purbright is going to be challenging enough because it's basic training, it's supposed to be hard. It's going to be difficult, but having A, the right mindset, and the grit and determination to do it is quintessential but having the best kit that's going to make life so much easier for you is you know it's next to nothing really um so if you're still here and you've made it to the end of this little rant i yeah i do thank you i wish you all the very best in your your training at purb right stick it through and i promise you life is better in phase two and the army is a decent career for those who didn't really have anywhere else to go like myself or for what other other reason Anyways, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Best of luck. And bye-bye.